Hello everybody, this video is the first part of the full game tutorial for Level Helper 2 using SpriteKit engine. In this part we will talk about creating a project, creating sprite sheets, using uh, standalone image files and uh, how to load a basic level into the SpriteKit engine. So let's create a project by uh, choosing create new project and then uh, choose a location. Uh, while you can uh, create uh, a project in your own folder, it is better that you create a project in an empty folder. So let's create an empty folder. I will give it a name, give me candy, since this is the name of the game. And the project will also have the name, give me candy. I want to use Sprite Kit Engine, but you can choose your own. And uh, the devices I want to support I want to be in landscape orientation and this scheme over here will add all the devices that uh, I want to support. You can add more or you can remove some of the devices if you don't want to support uh, all these devices. And you can edit them by uh, just uh, clicking in the required property. So let's choose create project and over here I'm, go I'm going to be asked uh, if uh, I want to use a basic uh, template. So I'm going to choose yes. And this will create uh, for me an untitled scene. So let's save this. And let's create a new folder called Scenes. Because we want to keep our project organized. So in this Scenes folder I'll put all the level helper scenes that uh, I'm going to create. And let's give it a name, Main Screen. And save. Let's continue by adding a background. So uh, let's go to the assets uh, that uh, are provided for this tutorial and you will see the folder backgrounds over here and um, an image for each device we support that it's uh, of the size of uh, that uh, device uh, screen. So uh, let's copy all these uh, images. Actually, let's copy the entire folder backgrounds. Let's go to our project folder over here and just past it. And now if you go over here to the project folder, the, it has been refreshed. And if you look inside, you will see that uh, we can see four uh, individual images. Now we want to see one image and uh, we want to instruct the level helper to use the required image for each device. So in order to do that, let's uh, go back to showing um, Finder and let's go to the project settings. And as you can see over here, we have the devices, we have the screen resolution and we have a suffix property over here. And um, we want to rename all images to include this uh, suffix uh, property. So all images that are uh, have the same name and contain this suffix will be seen as one individual image file. And uh, you'll also see a ratio over here. So because these uh, devices are very close together, they have almost the same size, they have a ratio of one. And the iPad Retina, which is double the iPad, it has ratio two. So basically this uh, image is twice as big as uh, the iPad uh, resolution. So uh, that's why it has the ratio two to instruct level helper that it needs to uh, scale that uh, uh, with uh, the required ratio. Uh, so uh, for the iPhone 3.5 inch, we have no suffix. So uh, let's rename this and remove any suffix and for uh, the 4 inch we have the minus 568 suffix so let's put that suffix in for the iPad we have minus iPad and minus iPad around 2x and now if you go to OK as you can see over here the background it's now uh, viewed as one individual image and if uh, we change the device, for example, you will see that uh, the representation of the image over here, the icon and the size, it's uh, displayed based on the active uh, device that uh, is simulated in the scene. So let's drag the background into our scene. And let's put it in the middle of the, scre of the screen. 
And the nice part is that I want the background always in the back of everything that I have uh, in the scene. So to do that, I'm gonna put this in the back user interface. So uh, now the background will always be in the back of everything else. And if you want something to be always on the top, like some uh, buttons that are available on screen, you'll put it in the front user interface. Also, whatever it's placed in the back user interface and front user interface will not move when you have a camera that moves, uh, that is active in the scene and uh, moves around. So uh, another uh, thing that we must care about the background is we don't want to accidentally uh, select it and uh, move it away from uh, the center. So to do that, let me undo my movement. To do that, I'm going to lock uh, the background. So uh, you can either lock it from here or from uh, this property over here. And now in the scene, I can no longer select it by mouse. But if I want to change some property on it or even move it, I can select it in the scene navigator over here and now I can move it or change some properties uh, around. Let me undo the position change. So uh, now let's save and uh, we now have a background. Let's now create a sprite sheet and uh, put all our individual sprites into it. So let's go to project navigator choose plus new optimized sprite sheet file and let's go to our folder where we have the resources for our tutorial and if we look over here we have the bottom leaves which uh, are a bunch of uh, image files top leaves and title and uh, vine uh, image files so let's select this uh, top and uh, bottom leaves folder and our title and vine uh, png files and let's drag them on top of um, our sprite sheet window and as you can see they've been imported and uh, packed together real tight so that uh, they uh, used the less space possible and let's uh, click on command s to save the sprite sheet and let's create a new folder called uh, sprite sheets and save this as uh, main screen so this will be the sprite sh uh, sheet where we keep our uh, main screen uh, assets. And as you can see, a representation for each device is created. Now we no longer need the sprite sheet editor opened. And if we go to the project navigator, we will see the sprite sheet over here. And if we expand that, we can see each individual uh, image file that we have um, imported into the sprite sheet. If we double click on this file, we can uh, edit it further by uh, importing, uh, deleting sprites or uh, changing one of the property like a name or uh, if it's rotated or not. The next step will be to place the sprites from the sprite sheet we have just created in the scene and we will place them based on a reference image that uh, my artist has sent to me uh, because in some conditions the artist will uh, give you a basic layout of uh, the level you can uh, have it both ways you can have a layout from the artist and you can also send uh, a reference image to the artist to uh, create for you a basic uh, layout because uh, in level helper if you go to tools over here and uh, you click on a save scene image representation you can create an image of uh, the level you have uh, so far and the artist can uh, use it to optimize uh, the images you used in the level or to create something based on um, on your layout so i will save this as a scene test save the image and if we look over here we will basically we don't have anything right now but uh, this is exactly the scene that um, is generated for us um, so it's this is as far as uh, the image go if for example we would have another image placed over here for example and now I'm gonna save the scene image representation I'm gonna use the same file replace and let's open it again 
the representation will look something like that. So the entire level will be composed into, into an image on the required uh, file size and uh, you can uh, send the, that to the artist and he can change some assets around or uh, do a better layout for you. But uh, let's start and uh, create our, uh, our layout. So in the assets folder for this tutorial, copy the reference leaves folder, which uh, contains the layout for the top and bottom leaves and go to our project folder and uh, pass that folder in. And now drag the top leaves PNG file and uh, what we need right now is to place our sprites exactly the same and then we'll optimize it for uh, our game. So let's go to sprite sheets. Let's extend the sprite sheet uh, file. And if we search for top over here, we will have this uh, top leaf sprites. And I rename them in one, two, three, four, and five. So basically, this is the sprite we use for the first three leaves, the fourth and the five. So let's drag this uh, in the scene. And because later on we will rotate the leaves around the anchor point, let's move the anchor point uh, to this edge size where uh, the leaf should uh, rotate around. And let's place it on top over here, like this. And uh, because the third, uh, the uh, three leaves are the same, let's just copy past it. So Command V. Let's rotate it a little bit and put it on top. Command V again. Put it over here. Now the fourth. Let's move the anchor point. And the fifth. Move the anchor point and place it over the top. Now we want to put all these leaves into a parent so that when we move the parent we will move the entire leaves uh, uh, of the top regions. So we will create a new node. Let's uh, resize it a little bit so that we can uh, include all the leaves in it for better accuracy, but this is not uh, really required. So let's uh, select our uh, leaves and drag them into our node. And now if you move the node, you will move the entire uh, leaves uh, from the top because they are children of this node so when you move the parent you will also move or rotate or transform um, the children and let's move the leaves uh, inside the node to have our level a little bit organized and now we basically have our uh, top leaf reference most of it looks the same but if you look at this leaf this is in on top of everything and this over here it's not the same so we'll select this leaf and change the Z order to put it uh, on top of the previous leaf and this one is also in the back of uh, the two uh, near it so let's put it in the back and now we have uh, everything uh, the same so we no longer need the uh, top leaf's reference image so let's just remove it and now let's move the let's rename this to top leaves and let's move this node where we want it to be and that's on the top region of our uh, screen and if we go to preview mode and we switch to iPad for example um, let's hide the animator over here the leaves are not uh, they look like they're in, in mid-air so let's fix that then by uh, moving the leaves a little bit to the top over here because we need the leaves to look better on all devices and maybe even duplicate some of the leaves to put it like so and let's take this one and put it over here for example and if we switch to the iPhone 4 inch we still have a region over here in the on the sides that are is not covered so let's uh, do another copy past and put it maybe like so over here and let's take this leaf for example and pass it over here and put it all in the back a little bit like so and now if you go to preview mode 
it looks okay on iPhone 4 inch it looks okay on the 3.5 inch and on iPad we have it looking great maybe over here just move this leaf a little bit to the top and now it looks even better so uh, this is our uh, layout for the top leaves for the bottom leaves I will uh, leave that as an exercise for you so just follow the same steps and you'll be all right let's now take the top leaves node and uh, animate uh, all the leaves uh, inside of it so uh, we're gonna go to the animation tab over here and we're gonna create a new animation called wind and let's call it one because we will have three wind animations and let's select play on load and uh, let's select repetitions zero this basically tells that uh, when the repetitions are zero it means that it will loop forever so uh, this is a good way to test our animations because later on we will have uh, one repetition and we will uh, use notification to change between the animations so let's go to the animator and let's make it a little bit bigger and over here we have uh, the children rotation properties we want to animate the rotation of um, each and every one of the leaves inside the top leaves node so uh, because we want to do it looping we will need to have the first keyframe and the last keyframe exactly the same and to do that we will basically just uh, go to record mode over here and uh, click on the first keyframe and on the last keyframe and this will basically create two identical keyframes so when the animation uh, uh, will play it will uh, loop because uh, everything it's the same on the first and last um, keys so now what we want to do is uh, go to the middle of the animation and rotate each uh, leaves a little bit uh, so that we can uh, mimic the movement uh, of leaves in the wind and uh, now the problem is that the animation is on the top leaf node but when we select for example another leaf in order to rotate it now the animator goes to the properties of this uh, object over here that is selected and uh, this doesn't have uh, any animation so nothing it's uh, it's displayed but we want to animate uh, and uh, edit the animation on the top leaves node so in order to do that we need to pin the animation in the animator so it doesn't get unselected so we're gonna go over here and click on a pin icon and now the animation will uh, remain uh, in the animator even when we select uh, another object so uh, with the animation pinned down let's go to the 15 to the middle of the animation and now select each leaf in um, our node and just rotate it slightly in order to create our uh, wind movement so I'm just selecting uh, each leaf just a little bit and I'm just uh, rotating it slightly and when I'm done just click over here to create a new keyframe let's exit record mode and now if we move the slider you see the leaves are um, moving just a little bit exactly how we, we, we just animated it so if you go to preview mode right now because uh, the animation is uh, set to play on load and it's uh, looping everything looks uh, the same but um, for the user seeing this animation over and over it will not uh, look uh, really natural so uh, in order to fix that to give a more natural look to our animation we have two possibilities we can either create one long animation and animate the leaves and in that case being a uh, long animation it will not be that obvious to the user what's uh, going on or we can create several small animations 
and using the code via notifications when one animation ends we will randomly choose another animation uh, to start uh, playing and so on and so on and this will look like random uh, natural uh, wind uh, movement for uh, the leaves so we will choose this uh, multiple animation approach uh, since um, using this way I can also show you in code how you can handle and use uh, animations so uh, what we will do next is uh, go to our uh, animations tab for the top leaves and uh, we want the first animation to play on load and we want to do the repetitions to one because uh, if it's looping forever we will never get uh, a notification that uh, that animation has finished and the next step we want to do is to copy our animation and create a new one based on that. So I'm just going to select the animation, Command C and Command V. So now we have a new animation that is exactly the same like uh, as the previous one. Let's uh, select uh, this animation and remove the pin from it and select new animation and pin it so that we can uh, modify it. Uh, go to record mode, go to the middle of the animation and uh, delete this key because uh, we will modify it. And now let's uh, select each leaf and uh, rotate it in a different way. So I'm just going to select um, each leaf and rotate it just a little bit. When you're done, create a new key and now we have another animation that starts and ends the same as the previous one and um, it behaves a little bit uh, different. And let's create a final third animation, just Command C and Command V, rename it to Wind3 and uh, again pin it so that we can animate it. Go to record mode and let's uh, remove the middle key and rotate the leaves just a little bit. And add the key and now we have three animations that we can use for our uh, wind simulation and uh, that will be all we need for uh, the moment. So let's save the scene and go on from here. In this step we will publish our level into the project folder and import all the resources into Xcode so that later on we can load the level into SpriteKit engine. So let's go to publish over here and navigate to your project folder Let's create a folder called uh, Published Resources and now select that folder and publish uh, our scene into that folder. And if you go to the project folder over here and look inside the Published Resources, we'll see there are multiple files over here. And the only files that are from our project are uh, the main screen um, sprite sheet and the main screen uh, level file. All the other files are generated there because they are part of the demo project that comes with uh, the basic template and later on I will show you how to clean everything up so that uh, you can have a clean um, project. But now let's open uh, the Xcode project. So go to the Give Me Candy folder and open the Xcode project uh, located inside it. And over here we will want to import the published resources folder we just created. So right click and add file to your project. Choose the published resources folder. Choose create folder references for any added folders. This is very important. And choose all your targets. And then click on add. So if your folder is not blue in Xcode then uh, you need to remove it and uh, try again. And this will just include all the sprite sheets and the level files because that's where 
we published our um, our level file but we also need to take care of the standalone image files that we use the backgrounds that we use so let's include the folder containing the backgrounds that uh, we use in our project also uh, create folder references and select all your target and choose add so now we will want to load the level we just published into sprite kit and further on we will uh, create the game logic to handle our animations and anything other that uh, needs to be handled so let's go to viewcontroller.m and let's replace this line over here with um, sk scene scene equal l has seen lock in it with content of file and the level file we want to load is located in the publish resources main screen lhash pull list. So let's write published resources slash main screen dot lhash pull list. And now if we build and run, we should have our um, game loaded. Yes, so our level it's loaded. The animation is uh, has been has played, but it's only played once because uh, that's the number of repetition for that animation. Now we know that everything loads okay, but uh, we still need to add the game logic for our animations. So, uh, in order to do that, we will uh, create a class that is subclass from uh, El Hassin and uh, add our game logic there and most of the time this is how uh, you will handle loading levels through a subclass because you most of the time you will need to l create some game logic for your uh, scenes so go to um, xcode uh, right click and choose new file select objective c class select uh, the subclass to be el hasin and uh, choose a name for the new class i will call it main scene because this is the class where we will load the main um, screen uh, level and add our game logic for the main scene and choose next and select all your targets because you we want this class to be available in our in all our target and uh, choose uh, create now in the header we will uh, import the level helper 2 api header and then we will create a static method called the uh, scene and uh, then we will go to the source folder the source um, file and uh, let's write um, the statement to load our level so we will do return main scene alloc in it with content of file and we need to load published resources main screen that lhash list file and now we need to subclass the init with content uh, of uh, file method so uh, add id init with uh, content of file self equals super init with content of file if self returns self and this is the point where you want to initialize your stuff to search for object inside the the level so that you can later use them this is the place to do it so you need your content here and now we have um, let's uh, just uh, go to the view controller and load our level to this scene so go to view controller over here and import main scene and over here let's remove this and say main scene scene and that will be all let's also modify the mac os target and go to app delegate mac.m import main scene and change the statement over here to use the main scene class and now if you build and run we should have our level loaded Okay, but still nothing happens because we haven't yet to add the game logic for uh, changing the animations. So let's close it and go back to our main scene and overwrite the notification method for uh, the animation did finish playing. So do void did finish playing animation 
and an animation object is returned to us. So let's take the node that um, that animation belongs to. So we will do level helper node node equal anim node. This returns us uh, one of the objects in the level that plays that animation. And uh, let's check if the node is valid and if the node name is equal to string top leaves because we are interested in the uh, only for the node that uh, has the name top leaves since uh, that's where our animation is and let's do this for uh, the bottom leaves uh, also is equal to string bottom leaves uh, because for the later on you will do the bottom leaves animations so uh, let's handle that also so now we will take all the animations available on um, on this node and we will create a random index for the new animation we want to play between 0 and the number of animations available on the object let's uh, retrieve the new animation from uh, the array and let's set uh, this new animation uh, as active on uh, our uh, on our node and because when you set the animation active it uh, basically just um, activates the animation on uh, on the node but it doesn't reset the animation so if it was previously deactivated in the middle of animation then it when you set it active again it will continue from uh, that point so in our case we need to restart our animation because uh, we want the animation uh, to start from the beginning let's add a log over here so that uh, we see what's going on so if we run this now we should have a log stating that the animation has changed and everything should the load should play randomly so it played wind 1, wind 3, wind 2, wind 2 again and uh, it just plays all the animations randomly and it looks uh, much natural and much better now let's uh, talk a little bit about Z order and uh, add the title and um, the vine to, to our scene so let's drag the title sprite over and also drag the vine sprite and what we want now is the title to be behind the top leaves and the vine behind the title and in order to do that we will just change the Z order now keep in mind that the Z order it's local to the parents so uh, if you change the Z order inside the leaves of, uh, of this top leaves uh, node then that Z order will be local to this parent and uh, if you change the Z order over here uh, everything will be local to the game world since this is the parent of uh, these three objects over here so now the vine has uh, the smallest Z order so let's place it like this and uh, the top leaves and the title have the same Z order but uh, let's make the title with uh, actually let's make the top leaves with one uh, Z order so that the title is behind the, uh, the, the leaves and let's place it a little bit like this and now let's just move the leaves a little bit so that uh, they will look like they float in the wind and they cover the title so if you go to the preview it looks okay let's see the iPhone the iPhone it's still okay and the iPhone 3.5 inch it's uh, still okay so let's now uh, clean our project and uh, do our final publish for uh, this part of the tutorial so let's go to the finder in our project folder and what you need to do to clean the project is remove all these uh, demo files so the demo project and uh, the demo folders and let's move this to trash 
and then go go to Xcode and of course uh, the references to this folder will no longer be available so we need to delete those and uh, you need to delete all these uh, demo classes over here so uh, let's go in finder and remove this demo examples folder move it to trash and uh, now Xcode no longer has the references to them so let's uh, delete the folder demo examples and now if we compile we will get some compiler warnings so um, in the view controller we will no longer have the Elsin introduction so uh, let's uh, remove that and uh, now it should compile okay but let's switch to the macOS target and see if everything is okay there and we are again missing this uh, file so let's remove it now compilation is uh, okay so let's do our final publish but before we do that let's go to the publish resources folder and delete everything because we don't want to have uh, a bunch of assets over here that uh, are not from our project so let's remove everything and do our final publish in the publish resource folder and if we go over here Oh, we will see that we only have the files that um, are related to our project. It seems that Xcode doesn't want to refresh even though the files are there. So let's just try to do a clean and let's compile for macOS and see what's happening. As a final step, I've added the bottom leaves uh, node together with all the leaves based on the reference image and I've created all the animations so that uh, in the final project that you download for this chapter of the tutorial, you can have something uh, to compare against your project in case that um, you have some uh, problems. But uh, as a side note, if you have questions or uh, need help in certain way, please don't hesitate to contact me on forum or using the contact form on the gamedevhelper.com uh, website. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.